Hi, I'm Nick Shell, and I assume you're watching this video because you've just seen me perform my newest song called I'm Taking Over the World Today. And if you haven't just watched me perform that song, then this is just weird that you're watching this video instead. So there's a link below where you can watch me perform that song. But this video is to break down what inspired me to write this song. For me as a songwriter, I care most uh, about the content of the song itself. The lyrics are everything to me. So ultimately, it's like being a poet, but the only way to get people to really listen to it is to put it in song form, which really complicates things, but apparently it's what I enjoy. So what I aim to do and I've done for years now is to uh, record at least one song, uh, basically per month for each year. So that gives me about at least 12 songs per year. Here we are in the fourth month of 2024, and here's the fourth song that I'm doing. Now, I actually wrote this one about four months ago, and I planned for it to be my first song for January, but a few others got in the way, and I uh, need to happen. And then I wrote this bridge, and this song came together. So now it's finally time for this song to come out. I'm taking over the world today, and I like to, for those of you who care about Enneagram and that are watching this video, I always am interested to see how Enneagram personality shows up in a song, if we were to give the song itself an Enneagram. Uh, so I am nine wing eight, so I am someone who needs to be at peace and needs to relax and chill, but before I can, I have to have some kind of challenge to overcome. And so that's where that eight wing comes in. Uh, so this song, a very confrontational title, I'm taking over the world today. But obviously, as a peacemaker, as a number nine, it has a different feel to it. So I want to go ahead and get into the lyrics and then explain how this can be actually the opposite of how it sounds. So here we go. So many things we're taught to fear we don't have any control of. When information isn't clear, interpretation rules us. The bad news is there's no good news uh, to consume when you worship at the altar of the Temple of Doom. No, specifically what I'm addressing here is that when we watch the news or read the news, pretty predictably, it's one side or the other. It's very conservative or it's very liberal. And their whole objective is to sell the news, to sell the ads. So they need one side to be wrong and one side to be right. And for me, as a nine, as a peacemaker, as a mediator, I know that's not how it actually works. There's truth on both sides and there's exaggeration on both sides. But ultimately, when I think of the word news, I think of fear and, I, and or gossip. That's ultimately what it is. They're trying to capture our attention. So that's what I'm referring to as, the, as worshiping at the altar of the Temple of Doom. And then for the, it, it was supposed to be a bridge, but it ultimately I think it's really become the chorus of the song. Confusion, confusion is creeping in, but I found another narrative. I rule reality. My kingdom is the middle ground. Hereby I am the king of who proposes truth to me. I'm taking over the world that's in my mind, and I look good in this crown. Ultimately, I'm taking ownership of the information that's presented as truth to me. I'm in charge of that, and in that way, I am taking over the world. No, not the actual world with 8 billion people on it, but the world as it's presented to me through the lens of my own mind, I get to control that. I don't have to choose one side or the other. I've lived that way before, and I think a lot of people do, but I don't think that that's good for peace of mind, which I'll get to here in a second in the next verse. But the actual chorus is, I'm taking over the world today. Gonna be some changes made. Initiate imminent domain. Stand back as I stake my claim. I'm taking over the world today. So in case you're not familiar with imminent domain, is basically, for example, when the government has the ability to take over people's land to use for their own use. So for me, I'm taking news or I'm taking what's presented as reality and I'm putting my own label on it, whether it's real or, or, or truth or not. And so when I say stand back as I stake my claim, ultimately I'm making the rules on what is real and what is not. And then the second verse, so many things we're taught to love. Of course, I'm doing an opposite now, sort of of the first uh, verse, which is so many things we're taught to fear. Now it's so many things we're taught to love only cause us to self-destruct. So for example, I'm just gonna throw this out there, some things come to mind. Worrying, it's almost like we're taught to love to worry about things that, that, that may or may not happen. Uh, some other things I would say even just 
worship of self. I would say the worship of premarital sex, even like that, is in complete contrast to the Christian perspective of the world. So these things that ultimately break people down, cause them to self-destruct. We're taught that we should love these. You should you should love to worship yourself. You should love to uh, do what's right for you. You know, forget the rest of the world, or forget what's good for your peace of mind, which is the next verse uh, or the next part where I says, "Our peace of mind." Has a, has a price, it can only take so much. All we've really got are a few who love us no matter what. The meaning of life is found in the people who keep showing up. And that line ultimately was inspired by me uh, just thinking about, I'm disgusted by the concept of being in a room with people and they're on their phone instead of looking up. And it's like, look at the people around you right here, right now. We could be having a conversation but instead, I just feel like this is the norm. So for me, it's about, if we're looking for the meaning of life, I really do truly believe that so much of that is found in the people who keep showing up, whether they're related to you or not, whether they are supposedly your best friend or not, who's actually showing up in your life? And what do those conversations look like? And what does that time look like that you spend with them? So ultimately, the premise of this song, and it is very dear to my heart, it is very much, uh, powerful and, and meaning to me is that I feel it's very important that all of us choose to take over the world in our own minds to recognize that what we're pre being presented as news is ultimately meant to divide us, not to bring us together. It's meant to sell fear and it's meant to be sold as gossip, which, you know, oh, I can't believe that person does that. Or, I'm much better than that. And that just feeds into pride. So I feel that ultimately we are being dished up pride and fear. Here, consume on this. Well, that's not good for anybody. That's not good for your peace of mind. That's not good for your identity. That's not good for, for trying to overcome anxiety. So uh, what's the solution? The solution is to focus on quality time with people who are actually in your life and to think, you know what, maybe the sky is falling, maybe the world is falling apart, but I don't have any control of that, and worrying about it's not gonna help. What can I do if the sky is falling, if uh, you know they're dropping a nuclear bomb? Well, guess what, we'll be vaporized in half a second, but I would rather be huddled with the people who care about me and who I care about, and invest my thoughts on that, instead of worrying about what could go wrong, or thinking I'm better than that person because whatever stupid news thing is presented. So I really feel that the news in general is to divide us, not to bring us together. And I think the solution is how can we become closer by choosing not to be divided. I would love to hear your thoughts. Again, you can click the link and see me perform this song. Feel free to leave a comment right there.